count of assault in the fourth degree looks like that's being amended to non-domestic violence, is that correct? Uh, correct. Okay, and uh, one count of rendering criminal assistance in the second degree. Should I to enter a not guilty plea to both counts, waive a formal reading, and address yeah. release yeah. before? Okay, ma'am, could you please state your full name? And is your name spelled correctly in that document in front of you? How about your date of birth? Is that correct as well? Okay. So it looks like you're charged with assault in the fourth degree. That's a gross misdemeanor. Carries a maximum sentence of 364 days in jail and a $5,000 fine. You're also charged with rendering criminal assistance in the second degree. That's a gross misdemeanor. Carries a maximum sentence of 364 days in jail and a $5,000 fine. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you at a future proceeding. You also have the right to an attorney, and you have an attorney representing you here today, and I believe your attorney told me you're pleading not guilty. Yes. So a not guilty plea is entered on both counts. And I have found PC. Would the city like to address release conditions? Uh, the defendant doesn't have any known criminal history, so we're not opposed to having the release on their own recognizance. Uh, as this has been brought up in non-domestic violence case, we are asking for no contact with the victim as a condition of release. Is uh, Dennis Walden yeah. present? Yeah. So is there anything you'd like to say? Uh, it was just a quick thing. You can come on up. Um, kind of stand where the deputy tells you to stand. Okay, go ahead, sir. Thank you. She got upset because she thought that I had done something wrong. Mm -hmm. that, that's the reason why the police were at the house. And she, so it was just like a fluke thing. Mm -hmm. You know, she, you know, she does get upset every once in a while, but, you know, it's not, it wasn't really that big of a deal to me. Okay. So I'm not afraid or anything, but I would actually like to have her home because she goes to two schools, uh, a beauty school and regular school. And so like right now she's missed two days mm -hmm. of, the, uh, of the beauty school. And so she's trying to get through that so that she can get a job. And she's your daughter, correct? Yeah. And she, so she has been living with you? Yeah. Yeah. I'm basically her mom, Mr. Mom. Okay. My caretaker. Okay. Um, all right. Anything else you want to tell me? Uh, this was pretty much uh, all caused by this person, Dakota, which is still on the run. And as far as I know, uh, he's been manipulating my daughter since she was like 17. And so I don't know what the circumstances were, why she, you know, would do anything to actually help out somebody. You know, maybe she was threatened or something. I don't know. Are you ready? You know, I mean, obviously that has to come out yeah, in some court. Uh -oh. so, on the fly, huh? But yeah, yeah, she actually really needs to go to school. So, you know, I just don't want, you know, anything to affect her ability to, to get an apartment or a job or, you know. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Your Honor, we're asking that she be released on her own recognizance. We are asking that there not be a condition of no contact uh, put in place. Um, you know, she's very young, she's attending high school, she's also been in cosmetology school. Uh, she doesn't have any history like this or any criminal history at all. Um, so it sounds like her dad is her main support system, so we're asking that she be allowed to return home uh, today, um, and given just her ties to the community, we think release is appropriate. Okay, so I'm gonna release you on your own recognizance, couple of conditions, maintain contact with your attorney, come to all court dates, and let's see, your next court date, and this will be with Judge Osler. <laughs> and this will be, so Wednesday, January 25th at 8.30 in the morning will be your next court date. You'll get that on a piece of paper before you go, so you don't just have to memorize it. And based on what um, Mr. Walden's told me, I'm not going to impose any no-contact condition. Thank you. Okay.
Roberts, Mr. Roberts. And Jonah, when you're ready, this is Mr. Roberts for the completion of his mission. Okay, how do you want to proceed? Uh, Your Honor, he is going to admit today and present some mitigating circumstances and a request for a special Oh, maybe he's late. And it, oh, yeah. It looks so like, so what I'm tracking is work crew. Is that? One day of work crew. One day of work crew. Work crew. Okay. All right. At least that's what I was given, unless there's something else. That's all I have. Your Honor, he is going to admit that he didn't complete the one day of work crew. It sounds like there was some confusion. Um, you gave him a probation or a, a probation violation sentence back in last January, and he knew he had one day credit for time served. He didn't realize that counted against 15 oh. days, but not 14 days. Mm -hmm. uh, so he missed like 15 days of one day credit for time served. Mm -hmm. He thought it was 14 with one day credit for time served. A little bit of confusion there. Um, so we're at, so he was taken into custody yesterday at four o'clock. He will be released this evening. We're asking that the court give him the one day jail. Um, to complete the conditions and since it ended up being jail time, you know, he essentially established jail time and whether it would work at this point. Uh, so we're asking for no additional sanction. Um, to support that, um, he wanted you to know that he works at Northwest Siding in Ridgefield. He works six or seven days a week, so he's working pretty much all the time. He's also currently attending family court, um, so he has to go to court each week. He has uh, supervised visits with his son and his staying clean and doing his UA, so he has a lot to be keeping. Okay, so we'll make it one day credit for time served and reassign any unmet conditions. Okay. Is there anything left besides good behavior on that? I'm not sure. But let me see. It doesn't look like it from what I was given, but. What do you have left? So the conditions were anger, eval, and comply. And I don't know whether he did that or not. I don't have it. I'll just uh, let him know he should report to district. going to be Lawrence Lamadu L apostrophe H O M M I was just looking at Mr. I E U. Yes. Come on up, Mr. Lamadu. Cause number two one five zero one nine D. He didn't record that we were that any attorney. Your Honor, yesterday we were before Judge Zimmerman. We had received a seven report back. finding that he was Understood the nature of the proceedings against them, but uh, unable to assist his attorney. Uh, we also learned that he has a felony charge uh, for which he was arraigned this morning. Judge Zimmerman wanted to see what happened on said other case. The other case uh, has now had a 1077 referral as well. Mm -hmm. um, given that, and I think given Mr. Ramadu's objection to the report, out is, is that we set it for a hearing um, for two purposes. One, to see what Superior Court is doing, and two, to uh, potentially seek a second opinion and uh, have Judge Zimmerman determine what goes on. Okay. What's the state's position? Uh, well, Your Honor, I apologize. I'm not particularly familiar with this case. I don't have any problem with a very short set over since my prosecutor is going to appear. Um, mm -hmm. I came armed with a restoration order. I guess we're not 
my thought is, is how are we going to enter that, right? Um, it says on there that we have uh, 14 days from he doesn't want to uh, sign it at this time, so I need to review whether or not uh, he's got a second opinion. Well, he wouldn't be able to sign anyway if he's not mm -hmm. so competent. Correct. So. Um, I can sign on, sign it. Um, but the, the the concern I have is is that Judge Zimmerman wanted to see this happen in a Superior Court case because I made the argument that he only had 14 days yesterday uh, at Western State Hospital, and Judge Zimmerman said, well, Unless he goes up there on a felony uh, restoration, which you have, I think, 90 days for much more than 14. Mm -hmm. So uh, he wanted to hear that. So if we're going to just do a short set over back to Judge Zimmerman docket, that's fine with me. I would prefer a special set where we can have a little bit more time. Okay. So in any case, you're, you're, you're at this point anyway, not agreeing with the with the uh, competency evaluation and I'd like to set that for a hearing. I think I want to see what's going on with the Superior Court case first. So I don't think I'll see that. Okay. Um, I just, I don't know, you just set it for a competency hearing. I'm not sure when we set those. Okay, I think that would be fine. I'd Let's see. Fine me. Okay. Let me see. Let's judge the minimum. Uh, if you want to do a review docket early um, next week, that's fine with me or on a. What's the earliest we can get us to do a special set? Um, that would be like 1250. Okay. At 3 o'clock. going to keep a hold in place because no determination has been made about your competency. Okay. And but you can, of course, revisit that on uh, December 12th, or I'm sorry, December 6th, which is when the hearing is going to be. And there's no bail on this? Uh, let me see. Your Honor, he was released. I'm not sure. Were you on bail? There was no bail, my understanding. Yeah, it looks like Judge Zimmerman ordered hold without bail, so I'm going to leave that in place for the time being. I think he did that because he didn't do the evaluation out of custody. Evaluation's now been done. I understand you probably won't have the authority to make the rules. Well, I'm, I'm not going to override him in that. I'm going to leave it as is. I object. <laughs> so December 6th at 3 o'clock with Judge Zimmerman. Okay, thank you, Arnie. Thank you. Would See David Peabody. <laughs> okay, sir, could you please state your full name? And is your name spelled correctly on that document in front of you? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. My address is Okay, and how about your date of birth? Yes, sir. Okay, so I'll leave the address as is, and if the city wants to change that later I'll, I'll leave it up to them so let's see so you're charged with assault in fourth degree domestic violence it's a gross misdemeanor carries a maximum sentence of 364 days in jail and a five thousand dollar fine you have the right to remain silent anything you say can be used against you in a future proceeding you also have the right to an attorney and it looks like you were screened for an attorney but you didn't qualify so there's a couple different ways we can proceed today if you're comfortable representing yourself and just entering a plea of not guilty 
I can take your not guilty plea. We'll talk about uh, release conditions, see if the city's asking for any. We can also talk about, uh, I'll give you a couple of future court dates. And then at that point, if you wanted to, if you wanted to hire somebody, you could. You certainly don't have to. You can continue representing yourself, though, for the time being. I'd like to represent myself for the time being. Okay. And are you comfortable entering a plea of not guilty at this yes, point? Yes, sir. Okay. So a not guilty plea is entered. If I may make a statement, sir. You may. I'll just advise you again that everything's being recorded, and if you say any, anything you say can be used against you. So um, well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to get through a couple more things, and then if anything you want to tell me, I'd be happy to hear. So I have found probable cause. I mean, I've read the report that's on file with the court. Doesn't mean it has nothing to do with whether you're guilty or not guilty. Just obviously, I'm just getting one side of the story. And um, but based on that, there's enough information for me to set release conditions. So I'll ask the city what they're asking for in terms of release conditions. That can include bail, a no contact order, um, supervised release, probably some other things I can't think of right now. Uh, and if you want to, at that point after you've heard that, if you want to respond to it or tell me whatever you want to tell me, that's fine. Oh, we are asking for five thousand bail in this case, based on his criminal history as well as history of um, violent offenses. He does have a 2011 rape three out of Oregon, 2011 statutory rape out of Oregon, and then a 2010 rape act with a child felony out of California. So, based on those three prior um, violent offenses, again, we're asking for the five thousand bail. Um, in addition to bail, we are asking for a no contact order with the victim in this case. Uh, she was taken to the hospital following this incident. Uh, was given an MRI and X-ray. So there are some concerns there that the injury uh, went a bit above and beyond. Um, in addition to that, based on his violent history, again we're asking for an no-contact order. Uh, the victim is present in court and did wish to speak uh, to the no-contact order. And um, so I'll hear from her first, and then if you'd like to hear that first, then uh, I'll hear whatever you want to. So just keep looking straight ahead. And Ms. Uh, Van Engel, is that right? And what would you like to tell me? That I really don't feel the no contact is important, and more importantly is his job. We're really scared of him losing his job. He has a really good job, actually two of them. Mm -hmm. And he's in the process of actually being my medical assistant. I have definitely assist me on anywhere from meds to my meals and it's I don't know the best way to put this it's not as the officer placed or the way that he described to me as important mm -hmm. as a no contact as I, I really didn't agree with that. Like he said, I, I had no say so until I came here and I could state that I completely feel safe. I don't think that a no contact in order along with his job is a lot more important than staying in jail for something that I don't feel a little bit by. Okay. And is he, or has he been living, or have you been living <coughs> together? Yes. Do you have any children together? Anything else you'd like to tell me? Okay, thank you. Okay, Mr. Peabody, anything you want to add? And you don't have to say anything. I won't hold that against you, of course. You don't have well, to say anything. I was going to add, Your Honor, that um, adding to what the agent said, as far as her hospitalization visit, the MRI and the x-rays showed that there wasn't any breaking, fracturing, or any damage to the bones, just the bruising. Um, not only that, but I do work two full-time jobs. I'm the one that pays the bills at the house. So I work 70 hours a week at a shipyard, and I work another 50 hours a week delivering newspapers to you know, make ends meet, as well as taking care of her medical issues as well. She explained to Officer Juarez, and, or Suarez, excuse me, and Officer Bivens, that she doesn't wish for me to be arrested and that it was just something that was a mutual and got out of control. Um, you know, I spoke with them, I even tried explaining my side of the story to them as well, and they were extremely rude and hung up the phone on me. So uh, I just tried to explain it to them last night and I don't feel like I got anywhere with them, but I figured I might check in with them talking to the people this morning, okay. this afternoon, and asking that I 
be released on my own recognizance. I have been looking into doing regenerative therapy. Um, just kind of waiting on some callbacks from my doctor's office and my insurance company to see what's approved. And I go through Kaiser, so that's kind of my outpatient as well. So I am gonna I'm gonna release you to supervised release. A couple of conditions. Um, if you hire an attorney, I'm not saying you have to, but if you do, keep in touch with them. Um, come to all court dates. Your next court date is going to be let's see, Jan. And you'll get this on a piece of paper, so don't worry about writing it down. Uh, January 10th at 8:30 in the morning. Yeah, probably this courtroom, but sometimes it's in a different courtroom, so you might want to check on the monitors or check with the clerk's office to be sure. But it's probably going to be in this courtroom. Uh, no new crimes. I, I, for now, I'm going to say no contact with Jennifer N. Van Engel. Uh, <laughs> a couple of exceptions. First of all, you can have a third party contact to pick up any things you need for the short term, so personal belongings, toiletries, that sort of thing. Um, you can also have phone contact. I'm just going to leave it at that. You can have phone, telephone contacts. It sounds like you have some finances that you'll have to yeah, discuss. We're Together and we share cars, so. so, however, uh, do not discuss the case. Um, if you do, you could end up back here in custody. So, so just uh, phone contact, and that's it. Any questions about this condition? Well, from a practical perspective, um, you'll probably have to find a place to stay for the short term. Um, I understand. I have neighbors, apparently. Okay. So, um, and you can, of course, bring you, either you or Ms. Van Engel can bring that back, perhaps. I mean, I don't, I can't give any legal advice, but, you know, if, if you want to bring that back and ask that, that you know, contact her be rescinded at some point, you can. But for now, I'm just not comfortable not imposing it. Right. That makes sense. So we'll have some documents for you to sign, and as soon as you get out, if it's before business hours, go to supervised release and check in with them. And if it's after business hours, come back the next day. The easiest place to do that is just go to the courthouse on the ground floor to district court administration. Just say, I'm looking for supervised release, and they'll tell you what to do next. Michael Howard. Okay, so Mr. Howard, it looks like you're here because there's an allegation that you didn't comply with the terms of your sentence in a, in a uh, looks like an assault four case. And so what I'll do, first of all, you do have the right to an attorney it looks like you were screened for an attorney, but you didn't qualify. So, um, 
Well, let me just ask you a couple questions. You, what's your? It looks like you have a full time job. Is that right? Yes, I do. And is that? Uh, you haven't received a paycheck yet. Well, what it is is um, I work on um, like uh, assisted livings. I do mm -hmm. interns, and my invoices they take between thirty five and forty five days to come back. You know. Okay. And I usually go to all my appointments, and I just happen to be out there and, and missed a payment, so it kind of messed me up coming back this way. So I, I've, I've gone on all of my um, um, probation hearings. I go to all my treatment. Let me, so my first question, just the reason I'm asking about your income is because it looks like, I just want to make sure that you actually don't qualify for court-appointed counsel or oh, okay. see whether you do or not. Right. Well, just no, I haven't sure. gotten paid, so yeah. I wouldn't be able to afford anything right now. So are you like a... a um, like an independent contractor? Exactly, okay. exactly. And so you work for? Myself. Yourself. Okay. And you just started this? Yeah, like, um, I started doing this around uh, September. Okay. Like, full-time, like, actually, I quit my other work, and this is what I want to do now. And okay, but you haven't got a paycheck yet? No, I have not. And you don't know what that paycheck would be at this point? I mean, I, by paycheck, obviously, it's not really a paycheck if you're self-employed. What do you mean, like, the, the amounts? Is that what you're yeah. asking for? Um, I think that for the month of September was, like, I think, like, 1950. I think it was just, like, a ceiling and um, um, a few things like that, doors, painting doors. Um. So is that, is that the gross amount? Well, I mean, I get paid hourly basis, but I mean, on specific jobs, what they want me to do. Mm -hmm. I do basically like an interim uh, maintenance. So if the, the facility doesn't have a maintenance man, I step in until they actually find one. So they pay me an hourly wage, you know, full time. And okay. Yeah. All right. So based on that, it sounds like you probably, sounds like you don't qualify for court appointed counsel. Right. So I just want to make sure that we went over that. Um, so what I'll do is I'll have um, I'll ask corrections to say what the allegations are and what their recommendation is, and then once you've heard that, oh it's okay. I'll at that point I'll ask you whether you admit or deny those, and we'll kind of go from there. Okay. Go ahead. So sorry. So the allegations are that he failed to participate in mental health treatment, failed to report regularly, and change residence without permission of the court or probation officer. Okay. And what's the corrections recommendation? Uh, the recommendation is five days jail and three assigned. Okay. All right. So what I'll do is I'll go, just go through these with you and see if you're agreeing or not agreeing. First one is that you failed to participate in mental health treatment. Are you admitting that or, or denying it? I admit it. Okay. And then failing to regularly report to corrections? I admit it. And then changing your address without permission? I admit it. Okay. So I'll mark it as admitted, uh, and then what is there anything you'd like to tell me ab about that? Like what went on, your reasons, or? Well, um, because of my work schedule and mm -hmm. where I'm working, um, uh, I have it uh, with my um, therapist to where um, I usually meet with her twice a month. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, if anything comes up between there, I'll call her and reschedule. Um, I usually, I haven't made any, missed any appointments. I've actually went to one yesterday, and then after that I went to probation, and, and then I w found out that I had the warrant. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I didn't comply, so I, I don't have anything to say about it. All right. And we did have some feedback from Columbia River Mental Health. Mm -hmm. As of August 1, uh, they that his attendance was um, irregular. So it looks like he's doing some of the things and then he has reported a few times, but his probation officer you know, had scheduled him for a different day. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of uh, these things going on. Um, obviously our concern is that he continues to report and that he engages in treatment. Okay. And I want you guys to know a lot of the times that I, when I report to probation, um, I get out late, you know, and driving far. So I'll get a lot of the stamped um, things saying I, I, I came, I attended, but either the probation officer isn't there because it's late or it's a day that he's not in the office. So, I mean, I have no problems complying with, uh, with the rule or whatever. So what I'll do then is I'm going to, would you be able to do, there are corrections asked for five days jail, would you be able to do work crew? Is that something you could? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. 
So I'm going to give you, we'll say one day credit for time served plus three days of work crew. And then so you should be let out later on today. Perfect. And then just as soon as you're let out or the next business day, if it's after hours, check in with corrections. Absolutely. And, and get signed up for work crew. Okay, perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Can I say something, Your Honor? Uh, if you'd like, is this about? This is about Mr. Howard. Okay. I'm the victim who, from the original, started all of this, and okay. I live up in Seattle now. Mm -hmm. I was contacted via social media from this young lady here, who he's also a part-time caregiver for her father, and she drove the car, and so we were. She didn't know how to get the keys back, and you know, so I drove down here. But while I was here, I was going to ask, if possible, if we could get rid of the no contact order. I don't even live here anymore, and I just didn't want this to cause any more problems for Mr. Howard, so. So I can't address it today because it's not on the docket in the state or city doesn't have notice of it. Okay. But since All what right. you can do is um, just go across the lobby to the clerk's office and they can tell you how to get it on the docket. I mean, I could appear by phone. I'm, I'm you, so busy. <laughs> you might be able to. Um, that would be great, but I know it's gonna fall off. This is a year and a half ago. So when you file, when you file that request, tell them, you, ask them if you can appear by phone and whoever is hearing that, probably Judge Zimmerman would have to approve that, I think. Um, and I, I don't know what, what his answer would be. I get a twofer, so, okay. Yeah, I, I understand. I, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I can't do it today. No problem, I understand. So, but, but since you're here, you can at least get the, start the ball rolling. So there's no need to ask for a property release because he'll be released today so she can get her keys or the car or whatever. Yeah, he should, he should be able to get back anything that the jail has um, when he's released later on today. Okay. Thank you, sir. And let's see. Uh, Brock Peters. Good afternoon. Let's see. Okay. Could you please state your full name? Brock Andrew Peters. And what's your date of birth? So it looks like you're charged with two counts, and this incidentally is in Washougal. You're charged with assault in the fourth degree, domestic violence. That's a gross misdemeanor. Carries a maximum sentence of 364 days in jail and a $5,000 fine. Count two that you're charged with is malicious mischief in the third degree. That's also a gross misdemeanor. Also carries a maximum sentence of 364 days in jail and a $5,000 fine. So you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you at a future proceeding. You also have the right to an attorney. And it looks like you did qualify for court-appointed counsel, but since this is a Washougal case, I don't have, they're not here. So um, if you are comfortable entering a plea, representing yourself today just for the purpose of entering a plea of not okay, guilty. I, I do believe that I could represent, represent myself today and um, we can get this resolved. Is that, I mean, is that what you're asking? Well, no, I'm just asking if you're comfortable entering a plea of not guilty oh, for today, and then that'll give, I'll give you some future court dates. You can talk to your lawyer, and then if you still want to do that, that's fine. Well. But, Let's, we can do that then. Okay, well, okay. I'll, yeah, I'll plead not okay. guilty. And um, and you can change it later on if you want. Well, so. I guess I have to. If I... All right, so not guilty plea is entered. Let me just see here. It looks like. All right, so I found probable cause. I mean, I read the report that's on file with the court. Um, those are the facts I'm stuck with. Obviously, I'm just getting sure. one side of things, and I'm not going to ask you about it because you have the right to remain silent. So um, what that means is I can set release conditions, and that could be bail or supervised release, anything like that. Would you like to talk to me about that, or you certainly don't have to. I won't hold that against you if you don't want to say anything about it. Do I want to be bailed? Or yeah. I don't have the money to be bailed, Your Honor. I work uh, as my, for myself. Uh, mm -hmm. Right now I'm work, working at a Christmas tree farm, Okay. and um, they need my help there. I've been working for Mr. Micus and uh, Mrs. Micus for going on about since uh, this last summer. Mm -hmm. I, um, I've been doing odd jobs since I moved back from Costa Rica about two years ago. I just put 60 days clean and sober. Oh, man, uh, I have my own place. I, it's, this, this is actually the, the steadiest, and my life's been going really well. In other words, I have my mm -hmm. own truck. I have work daily. I, my rent's being paid. This was late this month. Um, okay. So, uh, so tell I, you what. I mean, I mean supervised release, uh, I, okay. I don't know. All right, no, I think that's fine. So I'll, 
we'll make it supervised release. So it, um, we'll issue a supervised release. Okay. I'm going to impose a couple of conditions. Um, anyway, my, Jacob of Arnes is clothed back, and this is what it stemmed from, is a basket of clothes, of new clothes, okay? And I would like to contact him and let him get those back. And uh, we would like to resolve this, I'm sure, but this just came down to, st I, I go to, I'm in AA, mm -hmm. I go every day because I, my brain is fucked up, okay? And if I don't go every day, I get freaked out, okay? It was seven, six days over the holidays, I didn't go to a meeting, okay? I was on edge. Okay. And, um, and is um, Jacob. Jacob Jedro present? No. no. Okay. All right. So, like I said, supervised release, a uh, couple of conditions, maintain contact with your attorney. We'll give you their contact information so you can call them before your next court date. Come to all court dates. Your next court date is going to be, what I see is Washougal, right? So it's going to be January 5th at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. You get that on a piece of paper before okay. you leave, so Thank you. you don't have to just memorize it. Um, for now, I'm going to say no contact with, okay. um, Jacob. with Jacob. Jacob. And you can have one third party contact to obtain the essential personal belongings. I don't know if there are things that he has that you need in terms of toiletries, clothing, that sort of thing. Because there's stuff that belongs to him. Okay, well, I'm not going to address that. Okay. But if there's something you need. Oh, no, this is my house. Okay. The house is where, where I mean. Does he live there? He's. He does live with me, and, and right. we have to get this figured out. So if, he, if he's living there, I can't, I'm not going to kick him out. So you'll probably have to find somewhere to well, stay for the short term. It's my, it's under okay. contract, I mean, the rental agreement's in my name. Right. He just moved in six days ago. So, that? yes, I understand I'm that. Sorry. I know how it works. Okay, you have to so, so listen, you're going to have to move out. I mean, you're going to have to find, not move out, you're going to have to find somewhere to stay until either the no contact order is rescinded, you know, or, yeah, basically until the no contact order is rescinded. If he has a place to go? Now, if he wants, I'm not going to let you talk to him about it. Okay. I'm not going to, um, well, tell you what, I will, you can have one third party contact to obtain these per essential personal belongings and to see if, we'll say, see if victim is still living at the residence. You well, don't, I, know, I know that he's not because I have the house keys. Right. And so you you can have someone go over and see. They can't okay. contact him on your behalf. If, if, if you have somebody go out there and tell him to move, then you're going to end up back in jail. If you, so I can't even go by there then, okay. You, you can have a third-party contact go over there and pick up stuff for you and check and see if he's living there. But that's it. And if he's not living there, okay, fine. But if okay, he is, then that's if it. If I go there and the lights are off and the door is locked. Don't, I, don't go there. <laughs> so in other words, we have to contact him first. In order you can have you can have a third party. I mean, I'll say it again. You may have one third party contact. That third party contact may obtain any essential personal belongings. By that I mean toiletries, clothing, things you need to go stay somewhere else okay. for the short term. And that person can also determine if the victim is still living there. Okay. Now that's it. They can't talk they, about it or nothing. All right. They can't tell him to leave. They can't ask him if he's going to leave. They can just see if he still lives there. That's that's about as far as it's. I'm gonna go now. If he wants to come back into court, he can. Thank you. To get it rescinded, but Alexandria Kallenberg present. Okay, and ma'am, before we start, since it's a criminal matter, you do have the right to an attorney. If you can't afford one, the court would appoint one to you. Would you like to be screened for court appointed counsel? So in just a minute here. Um, we'll give you a document. You can take that over to the district court administration office. So it's on this floor, just across the lobby there. And you'll go in there with that document and talk to the people on your right when you walk in there. And they'll ask some questions about your finances. And I was uh, screened when I had, because I had a felony as okay. well, but they dropped the felony and now I'm just here. <laughs> Let's see if I have, so I don't have that, so I gotta have you, I have to, did you qualify then? Okay. 
Well, I still have to have you screened again, sorry. <laughs> okay. But so presumably you'll qualify and just come back and um, if you would just like to let the clerk know if you qualify or not, and we'll make sure you get to talk to somebody before we start. Okay. She'd like to be screened. All right. Yep, and just come back one way or the other. And Xavier Lucas. Xavier Lucas, not present. Benjamin McCool, not up. Okay, so it looks like you bonded out on a warrant, is that right? So, and this is this is your first appearance. Okay, would, would you like to be screened for a court appointed attorney? Okay, so we'll get you screened also. Did you hear me give the instructions to the last person up here? Okay. So like I said, just walk over there with this document, get screened, and come back. If you qualify, you can talk to somebody today, and if not, just talk to them. Richard Hadley. Okay, so it looks like you're here for a pretrial conference. Right. Did you want to speak with the prosecutor? Uh, yes, I'd like to because I would qualify for it. Okay. Right. Oh, you, you did? Okay, do you want, so if you, Basically, this is today is an opportunity if you want to to meet with the prosecutor yeah. since you're not represented at this point. That'd be great. Okay, so if you want to have a seat, um, she'll come over and talk to you. Let's see, Austin St. Mars. Okay, so let me see here. Looks like you're also here for a pretrial conference. So like I told the last gentleman, it's an opportunity to meet with the prosecutor if you want to. Did you want to meet with the prosecutor today? Okay, so if you'd like to have a seat, she will talk to you when she gets a chance. Thomas Coates, Robert Dillon, Leah Helm, William Pittner, and Ann Schmidt. And Chelsea Wisner. Figure out why you're here. Sorry, she missed court a couple What's weeks that? ago. Sorry. Um, she missed court a couple weeks ago. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if you wanted her to rescreen or direct direct the point. Has your financial situation changed a lot in the last few days? Okay. So I'll reappoint. I'll reappoint. Okay. So do you want to see this packet or? Um, I'm okay. I, okay. We're just. I, I'm not sure if a bail jump was filed. It looks like there is a count filed. So I'd like to enter a not guilty plea to the count of bail jump and maintain the not guilty um, on the other charge. Uh, we're asking that she remain out of custody. She did call me um, after she missed court and explained that we just mix up with the dates. She doesn't have any history. We had filed a diversion referral. I had spoken with uh, Mr. Randall, the assigned prosecutor, and he had indicated to do that today. I'm not sure if you have an objection and if you want me to wait until her next mandatory to refile the referral. I suppose I prefer to wait just okay. so Mr. Randall can sign off on that yeah. since I'm not really sure what that's not a problem. All right, so 
What's the city's position or state? Where do you um, I don't have a file in front of me. I, was she initially released on her own recognizance? It looks like she was. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm um, assuming she wasn't here today. She, there's some good conduct with her attorney. And it sounds like Mr. Ann was under the diversion, which would require that uh, she be out of custody in the Supreme Court. I'm not opposed to her remaining out. Um, if the court's inclined to order supervised release, I would ask that the court do that, but she's also here. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to leave you out on your own recognizance. Just means come back. You don't have yeah. to post it. He's not going to take you to jail. Yeah. So a um, couple, th I, I do have to, I guess, arraign you on this bail jump, but could you please state your full name? Jesse Brianna Woodford. And what's your date of birth? January 18th, 1990. Okay. And so it looks like there's been a, a count added. That's count three, bail jumping. That's a simple misdemeanor. Carries a maximum sentence of 90 days in jail and a $1,000 fine. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in a future proceeding. You have the right to an attorney, and you have an attorney now, again. And she says you're pleading not guilty, so a not guilty plea is entered. So do you just want to set this on the mandatory date? Uh, yes, please. January 10th? Yep, January 10th at 830. And um, can I get the case number? Yeah, of course. It's um, actually just want to take this packet. So since a warrant had been issued, you've got a warrant cancellation slip. Just make sure you keep that on your person for a couple of weeks just in case. So the same conditions that, that, that no, that's changed. It's still still in place. But. 